G'day mate, welcome back to Factorio with me, Jetty. In today's Factorio's Fundamentals video, I really, really want to cover smelter rays. Why? Because, believe it or not, they're probably the most critical part of your base. Raw resources are great, but honestly, until you've smelted them, until you've turned your, your raw iron, your raw copper, your raw stone into iron plate, copper plate, steel, or brick, they're pretty useless to you. So, with that said, we're going to run the intro and then get into it. When it comes to Factorio, you've got three different types of furnaces, okay? We have our stone furnace, which is the ones we started off in our burner city. We still have our burner city over here. I've, I've left it down as part of this test map. And we also used it with our very, very first jump starter base. And look... They're pretty good. They will actually, if you want, get you right the way through to end game. That's entirely up to you. They do have an upgraded version, which is the steel furnace. Biggest difference is it outputs twice as fast. Finally, we have the electric furnace. The electric furnace, its only saving grace is it doesn't require fuel. It also has the advantages it can use modules. I'm not going to really cover modules too much in this video. They are very, very powerful. They are very, very important but they're not something you're going to play with until you get into end game. So with that as out of the way, let's really dive into the difference between a stone furnace and a steel furnace. First thing we should really cover is what do you need or how long does it take to craft a iron plate or a copper plate? So if we hover our mouse over both these, we can see they take in one, uh, one of the ore types being either iron or copper, and they take 3.2 seconds to craft. Which means, if you want to do some quick maths and you want to see that your belt's out, uh, your yellow belt runs at 15 items per second, it means very, very quickly, some simple maths means you need to have 48 smelters, that being 24 on each side of the belt to fully saturate the belt. This is why in our jump starter base, that's exactly what I set up. I set up 24 on the top, 24 on the bottom, half doing iron, half doing copper. It gave us a full belt's worth of mixed iron copper out but at least it was a full belt's worth. So that's when it comes to your stone furnace. Your steel furnace, because it has a crafting speed of two, you have two options. You can either half the length of your smelter ray, so you go from a full row of 48, you can bring that down to 24, being rather than 24 top and bottom, you only need 12 top and bottom, and still output that to a yellow belt. Or your second option is you can double your speed of the belt. Luckily, Factorio has made this nice and simple. With our yellow belt moving 15 items per second, you can upgrade to red belt very, very early in the game and actually get out 30 items per second. So Factorio provides a nice, simple path to go from your stone furnaces outputting to a yellow belt to your steel furnaces outputting to a red belt. Again, twice the speed in, twice the speed out. Uh, at the same time, the other important fact a lot of people uh, a lot of people miss when it comes to your stone and your steel furnace is if you look at their consumes burnable fuel, your stone furnace has a maximum consumption of 90 kilowatts. At the same time, your steel furnace has the exact same max consumption. So it actually uses the exact same amount of coal for twice the output speed. So that is something you need to keep in mind if you're running short on fuel in your furnaces or you're running short on coal outright, you can just upgrade your furnaces from a stone to a steel and suddenly halve the amount of coal you're burning in your smelter rays. Because whether you like it or not, this is Factorio, you're gonna end up with a number of smelter rays. And that's why I really, really wanna spend some time on this video really covering how smelter rays work. So, if we remember our jump starter base where we fed coal in on one side, we we basically, I'll, I'll use this one, it's easy to see, we basically dump coal onto one half of the belt, we bring in our raw resource and we dump it on the other half of the belt. As you can see with our splitters, they're actually hanging over these two belts, the materials fall off, fall onto this belt and wrap around the outside. And we'll actually just set up this coal so it can start flowing in. And what I'm actually doing is I'm bringing coal in and then I'm intentionally splitting off half of it, fitting it into the smelter and taking the other half through. And the reason you can see that I'm doing that is it means I can chain my, my smelter arrays together very, very, very quickly and very, very easily and have them all run to complete in a straight row. It just simplifies things in the long run. Um, but as you can see, with us putting that in there, we're already feeding coal down here. These are all being fueled up, but now they need their raw resources. So. Very quickly, we're going to cover some minor 
miner mistricks, miner, whatever you want to call them. Um, your electric mining drill has a mining speed of 0.5 per second. If you're curious at all, your burner miner drill has a speed of half that again, 0.25 per, uh, per second, which means if I put four of these together, I'm getting one per second. If I put two of these together, I'm getting one per second. Again, our transport belts move 15 items per second, which is on their two lanes, seven and a half on one lane, seven and a half on the other, being a total of 15 per second. Which means simple maths, very, very simple. If these are outputting uh, one half per second, I wanna to get to 15 items per second. It means I need 30 electric mining drills. As we can see right here, I've already put down 30. And then what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna use a splitter, which is also a merger, to merge the top row with the bottom row. And then I can take that there and I can put that straight into my spelt array. And once it starts flowing through, we should get a full belt of output. And what we'll actually do is just on the end, if I have materials on me, uh, if we put that on the end, and again, these are all debug items, so you won't actually get them in the game. But if I put that on the end, that should automatically delete all materials. So. As you can see, these are slowly filling up. As you can see, that center belt is getting more and more full. By the time we get up to the end and the last couple of smelters fill up with ore and start producing as well, this belt is gonna be 100% full at all times, which is really what we're aiming for. We want a full belt of material out. It's much easier to, it's much easier to see if you have gaps and that sort of stuff in your base if you have a bottleneck or something like that if you have a full belt to start with if you have a patchy belt to start with it it's going to complicate your life as you move on but this is our very very first basic smelter rate again there will be a blueprint down in the description this is perfect for your iron or your copper because iron and copper both have the exact same recipe it is uh one iron ore in one copper ore in 3.2 seconds later we get a plate out but next one I actually want to look at is brick. Brick is slightly different. If we come over here, brick is actually two stone in for 3.2 seconds crafting time. So brick I've had to set up a little bit differently. Um, we actually have, as you can see, it's got much the same design at the front, but it has these extra couple of belts that come around, hug the outside. And we'll explain how they work in a second. So because we're going to go through the stone twice as fast, it means rather my copper, as you can see, gets right to the end of the belt. It means my stone would only get halfway through and then we're gonna run out of stone on the belt. So if we just hook up our stone really quickly, uh, plug that in there. Again, it's gonna come in here. It's gonna flow onto both belts evenly, come down the uh, belt. And I'm just gonna put one of those on the end really quickly just to make sure it deletes everything. And as you can see, by the time the stone gets to here, we're gonna find there's gonna be none left. It's all gonna all been used up, making not a full lane of bricks, but a half lane of bricks, okay? So we're only gonna have half the amount of bricks we, we actually would require to run a full smelting block. Um, actually, we can better demonstrate that by just putting a little zigzag right there. We should just fill one half of that. That looks pretty... Oh, no. We're waiting on you to get a little bit of stone. There we go. Now, just due to insert a timing, you will have the occasional piece that makes it past. But again, that's just down to inconsistencies with insert a timing. Um, on a purely mathematical point, these guys should never, ever, ever see any stone. But as you can see, stone's basically running out at this point. This point is 24 smelters in. We've reached the halfway point. We're out of stone. So what I've got done is I've put these extra little belts around the outside and they're basically hugging our smelter block. Again, we will have a copy of this blueprint down in the description below. We're going to feed that stone in. And what it's going to do is, again, probably easier to see it on the top belt. Let's remove that power pole. Put you guys... Uh, out of the way. Okay, as you can see, this belt hangs over the top. So what's going to happen is the material is going to fall off this outside belt, land on that belt, and that's going to make sure that we have enough stone 
to make it right the way through to the end of the build. Again, if we turn alt mode back on so we can see which smelters are running and which ones aren't, we're going to slowly fill up this belt until we have a full belt of bricks out, okay? That's really our, des our desire to have a full belt of bricks. You're gonna need bricks for a couple of things. You'll need it fairly soon for our third science pack being military science. I will have an upcoming video on the different sciences, the different ratios for the different sciences um, and that sort of stuff. But at the moment, I really wanna get through the fundamentals of how to build a base and how to get you up and running. So as we can see, the belt's basically full. It's it's just waiting on the last couple of inserters to uh, the last couple of uh, smelters to fill up, things to level out, etc. But yeah, we have a full belt of bricks at this point. Um, first lot comes in, it gets split both ways and does a pretty good job. Uh, second belt, uh, second belt comes in around the outside, hugs both sides and just tops up that belt, makes sure it gets right to the end. Um, I can see I have a coal problem. Yes, this this test map was not designed to run uh, quite this much. Uh, means I have a chance to cover this really quickly. So what we can actually do... That's the perfect spot to do it. What we can actually do is we can, because these both split and merge, we can actually run a brand new coal belt. Actually, we should probably do that from the outside. Uh, a brand new coal belt. Uh, wrong button. Click that first. Brand new coal belt, which can then inject some new coal into our main coal line to keep going into our next smelt block. Just want to confirm real quick. Yeah, that's about as full as it's going to get. Um, it's technically full as far as the mass is concerned, but insert a timing is never 100 percent okay the last smelter block i have is again slightly different um actually we'll cut you there because i really need to demonstrate steel first steel is an interesting recipe uh steel requires iron plate to craft so again we're going to come back to our little jump starter base because we actually have all the ingredients we need right here to start making steel Iron plate, as we covered, one iron in, 3.2 seconds later, we get one steel out, uh, one iron plate out. Five iron plate takes 16 seconds to craft, and then they can all be fed into an adjacent smelter directly with an inserter, same as we've been doing right here with direct insertion, making gears into belts or copper cable into, uh, I want to call them green circuits, but I know that's wrong. What's the official name? Electronic circuits. Electronic circuits. I... I'd get there in the end. Um, so what we can actually do is we can feed directly from one smelter to another. Or in the case of our little jumpstart base, I could have two inserters here, grab some iron, feed them directly into these smelters to start making some very quick early steel for us. And then going back to our splitters, there are some advanced options. If you click on them, you can actually have them filter different items. So because I don't want to craft more iron plate, I want to craft steel now. I need to have fuel on this belt to feed into these guys. What I can actually do is I can filter coal and I want to filter it to the right so it comes out this belt. If I put a belt there, we can see the iron ore has been shoved up here where it's going to do nothing. More importantly, the coal has been passed straight through and we can get some very, very early steel up and running. Now, of course, this is not automated, really. It doesn't have an output. What's going to happen is the steel is just going to stack up in these two smell, uh, in these two stone furnaces. But it does mean that when you want some early steel for uh, research, that one, heavy armor. When you want some steel for some heavy armor or you start wanting steel for some armor piercing rounds, you have a little bit of steel up and running. So this is something that maybe on your jump starter base, you might want to tag in. I just moved the ammo up to the other end of the belt and got a little bit of steel up and running. But when it comes to our steel smelter, it's a little bit special. It's a little bit different. Uh, so, so there's many, many different steel furnace setups out there. This particular setup makes use of inserter laziness and on top of that also takes advantage of small power poles because small power poles don't they just require wood and copper cable there is a bigger and better power pole that you do unlock 
uh, right here, energy distribution one, which requires steel. Problem is, it's a steel furnace. The idea is you want to make steel. You don't really want to have steel to make steel to have a furnace array to make steel. Yeah, you, you see where I'm coming from. So this design's a little bit funny, looks a little bit weird, but does take advantage, as I said, of the small power poles. So what we're actually doing is we're bringing coal in. And then because this belt is here aimed at this belt, uh, this belt can only output coal on the one side. That's very, very important because it's outputting on the bottom side because we did cover earlier that inserters are lazy when it comes to pick up and then uh, have a little bit of extra reach when outputting. So they preference outputting on the far side of the belt and they preference intake from the close side of the belt. So we have our first two furnaces down here. They're grabbing just a little bit of coal. Our next two inserters down here are designed to take our iron plate, which if we just put some uh, iron in there, we can see this inserter is going to grab the iron plate and move it onto the next furnace. Okay. This inserter here is going to grab the coal because it's lazy and it wants to grab from the close side of the belt. This inserter here is designed, and we'll just grab some steel and physically put it in there, to output onto the far side of the belt. So he's reaching out, putting on the far side of the belt. And again, we've got the exact same thing up here in reverse. So uh, this guy's wanting to put on the far side of the belt. So with all that said, we're going to hook in our iron ore belt. And again, ratio wise, you can see that this is 24 furnaces. This is also 24 furnaces. So we've got the same a ratio of furnaces in. All we're doing is we're double handling. So we're going from uh, iron ore to iron plate, iron plate into the next furnace to make steel. And then the steel is going to pop out onto these two central belts. Um, this is going to take a second to fire up. So we might just... Run at 10 times speed for just a second. And as you can see, we have a whole bunch of steel on this central belt. Now, as we covered uh, just a moment ago, we can actually use a splitter to filter the output. So what I actually want to do is I want to filter the steel and I want to take that belt and feed that belt in there and that belt in there and take that belt out. And as you can see, I have a perfectly clean belt of steel coming out the other side. I also technically have a belt of coal that I could possibly do something with um, on the risk that it's pulling off my smelter, my, my main coal belt that feeds my smelters, which is a risk if you start using this coal line. Normally I leave it right there, but I have a full belt of steel out. Now, the way ratios work, again, if you have one belt of iron ore coming in and you feed it in to make iron plate, you're going to get a full belt of uh, iron plate out. Once you take that and you convert it into steel, because it takes five times as long, you get one fifth of a belt out. So that is something you need to keep in mind that even if this belt backs up, it looks impressive. It's technically only one fifth of a belt of steel. In saying that, you don't need a lot of belt, uh, you don't need a lot of steel in Factorio generally one two of these furnaces being like one fifth two fifths maybe if you push things three fifths of a belt is really enough to get you from start to rocket without too much hassle. uh last thing i really want to cover is as i said the lovely steel furnaces so uh we'll grab an underground and bring our coal line up and well actually oops take a coal line in at yellow speed because it doesn't actually have to run it at red speed and have that slowly first populate with coal and at the second same time i actually have it's a little bit hard to see let's you move there you move there uh move you guys back for just a second so i have two yellow belts of iron ore. Again, they move 15 items per second. If I feed them into a fast splitter, we go 15 plus 15 merged together gives me 30, which I can then move out to a red belt. And just to prove we can then fit it in there, 
This is going to be a red belt input, therefore a red belt output. Uh, at least that's the theory. Uh, I'm out of belts. Remove unfiltered items. Cool. That'll just delete all the material. So as you can see, again, same story. Belt moves at twice the speed. But that means that we have twice the amount of uh, plate coming out. What I'm actually doing is, again, same story, taking that 30 items per second, splitting it into two 15s, because the parts I have on me only move 15 items per second, and then, in theory, destroying them. Much better. Um, so, same story. If I cut that belt, and, and you can do this anywhere in your base, if you happen to have a single yellow belt in a long run of red belt, obviously, you know, uh, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Your belt only moves as fast as the slowest piece of belt. So if I put a single piece of yellow belt in there, we're now running at yellow belt speed, which means only half my smelter is going to run because it's only inputting at yellow belt speed. It also means that I'm only technically getting half a belt out. So if I prioritize that left... Uh, Input. Uh, some more belt. Uh, remove unfiltered. And this belt will be basically empty. Um, again, due to inserters being not 100%, uh, you will find the occasional item is coming down here and the occasional item is missing from there. No, it's decided to be a good... A good little set of ins inserters for a change. Excellent. So, as you can see, because we have a yellow belt's worth coming in, we're only running half the furnaces, which means we're only having a yellow belt's come out. If I go back and I change that one single belt back to red speed, we then have twice the amount coming in. It's a little bit hard to tell. With experience, you'll be able to see fairly accurately whether something's moving at yellow belt speed or red belt speed. As you can see, we're going to start refeeding these furnaces, which also means that as these guys fire up, we're going to start putting in more than a full yellow belts out. We're going to go up to two full yellow belts any second now. As these furnaces fire up, there we go, two full yellow belts out. So that's your steel furnace. I really, really recommend early, early game. You build yourself your stone furnaces and then you upgrade them to a steel version and red belt. It means that Partway through the game, you have an opportunity to double the speed of your whole base in both input and in output, or at least your smelting array. Lastly, I did say I cover uh, electric furnaces very, very briefly. I, I have two things when it comes to electric furnaces. Electric furnaces are really, really good if you've decided that you're going to go out to an outpost out here, build a train network, and you've decided you don't want to bring back raw iron ore, you prefer to bring back iron plate. Steel furnaces have the advantage of you just need to run power. You don't need to find a fuel source. You don't need to take a fuel source out there to burn it, to turn it into a smelted item. So that's really is an advantage for doing electric furnaces. On top of that, they have the advantage of using modules and beacons. That's really about it. Generally, a lot of my bases, I go through stone furnace stage, go up to steel furnace stage. I won't move off a steel furnace until I'm... Launched a rocket, launched multiple rockets. I, I'm really going from a a base and I finished the game and I'm going for some sort of mega base style. So as I said, uh, we get to cover these really, really quickly. A electric furnace. Electric furnace has the opportunity to use modules. Okay. Modules, modules basically, in the case of the productivity module, they create items out of thin air and extra power. So as you can see here, our energy consumption has a plus 80% for this single module. The machine runs at negative 15% speed, so it's a little bit slower. It has 10% of extra productivity. So it means this yellow bar here, every single time it passes along, it means that I've made a item out of thin air. It also means because it has 10% productivity, every single time the green bar moves along one whole line, the yellow bar moves one tenth of the way, okay? Uh, on top of that, it also puts out plus 10% pollution. So it is gonna create a lot more pollution if you're having problems with the neighbors. Yeah, might 
be something that you want to avoid until you get to later in the game. As you can see, I've actually got two of these guys in here, which means my energy consumption is plus 160%, my speed is minus 30%, my productivity is plus 20%, and my pollution is also plus 20%. What I've actually done around the outside is I've put in beacons. Beacons transmit the effect of friendly, uh, of, of uh, the internal modules out to all the machines inside the yellow area highlighted around them. Um, as you can see, this is a very, very quick, very, very dirty module beacons set up and uh, just to really demonstrate how these work these have two speed modules they have an energy consumption of plus 70 percent with a speed boost of plus 50 percent if i hover over my electric furnace really really quickly i can see it has a crafting speed not of two anymore but because of all the beacons with all the speed modules it actually has a crafting speed of 13.4 speed so miles faster i've removed all negatives um caused by the productivity modules and I've actually boosted the speed right the way up. On top of that, um, we can see that it has a productivity of plus 20%. So I am getting that bonus 20% out of electricity and thin air every single time it crafts a single item. Uh, and our pollution is also plus 20%. And as you can see, the max energy consumption is plus a thousand percent. So it uses a lot of power. Uh, in fact, this one machine by itself, forgetting the beacons around it, which also require power, this one machine uses like two steam engines worth of power by itself. Um, it is two steam engines, right? Uh, 900 kilowatts, uh, 1.98 megawatts. Yeah, it, it, it's a lot of power. Um, and then all, each one of these... Uh, Beacons also has another 480 kilowatts on top of that. So each what, two of these is, again, another steam engine. So um, this example is very, very simple, very, very quickly. I just want to demonstrate the the power and the efficiency of both modules and beacons. As you can see, I have a yellow belt of iron ore coming in. And on the outside, well, first off, that's my whole smelter array. For yellow belt in, uh, I'm getting a yellow belt out plus 20%. Uh, if we just go to map view really quickly and I copy that smelter array in its entirety, um, you can see it's uh, significantly smaller. On top of that, um, I'm actually outputting to two red belts and then merging them back together. And like I said, I'm getting that one belt out that we're putting in, plus I'm getting an extra 20% iron wafting its way down the other belt so this is where the power of modules and beacons come in they are very expensive they are very very late game they're not something you're going to get to in a hurry um but with all that said that really covers your 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 module beacon uh you're meant to remove items and you're meant to remove items that's better so that really covers the, uh, today's lesson in uh, stone furnaces, steel furnaces, and electric furnaces. Like I said, blueprints for all of these will be down in the description. You'll find this is going to be the standard one you're going to use for iron and copper. You'll find this is going to be the standard one you're going to use for stone brick. And hopefully this is the one you choose to use for steel. Like I said, there is many, many options out there. This is the one I like to use purely because it's simple. It double smelts like or like most of the other ones do, but more importantly, I can power this up using small power poles rather than having to have steel already to then make steel power poles to then power up my steel smelter. That just seems a little bit redundant for me. Uh, and I all, will also include a copy of uh, the steel furnace variety for both iron and copper. You don't actually need to have a separate blueprint for any of the other ones because it's literally a matter of using an upgrade planner if we say we want to have all our yellow belt turn into red belt all our yellow undergrounds turn into red undergrounds yellow splitters to red splitters a stone furnace magically becomes a steel furnace and then we copy you for argument's sake we make a blueprint and we pop that there and i grab out my upgrade planner and I put it in this square, it instantly transfers everything over in the items I've set. So it's going to make all the yellow items become red items, all the electric, uh, all the stone furnaces become steel furnaces. And then I can save that blueprint and I have it right there. So 
I'm going to include one of these, uh, these three. And then if you want to upgrade the other ones, just make an upgrade planner. But with all that said, I'm out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed. Uh, the next video we should be covering will be base design. There's lots of different options when it comes out to a full base design, but we'll probably be covering that in the next video. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed. As always, if you found the video helpful, you learned something along the way, I'd appreciate it if you left, left a like button. At the same time, if you want to subscribe, that's entirely up to you. I'd very much appreciate it. Down in the description, you, you will find this particular playlist, which is a brand new tutorial series all about Factorio, along with a slightly older series. It's still got a lot of good current information in it. It's just built on older builds of Factorio, so the graphics are chunky a little bit out of date lastly is one other thing is of course if you've got any more questions need any more help there is a link to our discord it's probably up on the screen along with a link up in the top right hand corner come join us on discord come ask questions we have many many very very talented very very experienced engineers on our discord more than happy to help more than happy to answer questions for you but yeah that's it i'm out thank you guys so much for watching do hope you've enjoyed see you guys in the next one all right bye